What lies within a black hole is a question that everyone wonders about. Is it a gateway to another universe or does it just hide the space dump? Scientists who have been pondering the question for a long time have come to the conclusion that connects it to another question about how it all started in the first place. They say that it's us who might be living inside a black hole. A black hole is known as a cosmic vacuum cleaner and it is the total opposite of life. Strange right? Are we living within a black hole in another universe and another version of ourselves in our own? These are some rather perplexing questions and today we are going to reveal the truth behind them. The biggest existential question one can ever ask is where did this all come from or what was before that? If we just go back to the before about 13.8 billion years ago, way before our existence, everything in the entire universe was condensed into an infinitely small singularity, a point of infinite denseness and heat. The universe as we know it began with that single point that was infinitely hot and dense and inflated and stretched at unimaginable speeds after the big bang. Some might wonder where it all started and according to some scientists it all started in the mysterious black hole. Black holes are dense points in space that produce deep gravity wells. Even light cannot escape the tremendous draw of a black hole's gravity beyond a specific location. Anything that gets too close will be stretched and compressed as a result of the spaghettification process. The event horizon of a black hole is the border that surrounds its mouth. This is the point beyond which no light can escape. The singularity or the one point in space time is the inner area of the black hole where the object's mass is concentrated. A particle cannot escape the event horizon once it has crossed the event horizon. Now the black holes share some similarities with the universe. Just like black holes the universe too has a singularity and that is the big bang. Simply put it is the infinitesimally hot and dense point where it all began. After the big bang space expanded first at unimaginable speeds and then at a more measurable rate and it is still expanding today. This expansion gave us the event horizon of the universe. Now there might be a question in your mind, this universe is immensely large, how big would be the event horizon of that black hole we are in? Unlike the question the answer is surprisingly simple, the event horizon is very close to the actual horizon size of the observable universe. Here is another view, let's take the singular point where it all began as the seed of this universe. This seed was believed to be almost unbelievably tiny, potentially trillions of times smaller than any particle humans had ever seen. Despite this it is a particle capable of igniting the development of all other particles as well as galaxies, solar systems, planets and even us. But from where did such a seed with this intensity come from? Nikodem Poplowski of the University of New Haven presented the idea that the seed of our universe was created in the ultimate kiln, arguably the most severe setting in all of nature, inside of a black hole. According to Dr. Poplowski, matter inside a black hole reaches a point where it can no longer be crushed. This seed may be exceedingly small, weighing a billion suns, yet it is real unlike a singularity. He is of the view that the compacting process comes to a halt when black holes spin. They spin at the breakneck pace, possibly approaching the speed of light. And the compacted seed gains a lot of tension as a result of this spin. It's twisted and compressed in addition to being small and heavy. This compression of seed is just like a spring that unsprings with a bang. There is also another idea presented by Stephen Hawking, but before we go any further 
it's crucial to note that many theoretical physicists have come to believe that our universe isn't the only one. Instead, we could be part of the multiverse, a vast collection of distinct worlds. According to Hawking, every time a black hole is created in the universe, it could give rise to a baby universe. That universe will only be accessible to an observer that crosses inside that black hole's event horizon. This idea is fascinating. It could be possible that we are living inside a parent universe's black hole, and in the black hole of our universe, or the baby universe, there lies another universe, the baby of the baby universe. This means that every time a black hole is created, a new universe is born. A black hole's existence is defined by the presence of an event horizon, a boundary that tells us a radically different story for an object outside of it than one inside. Any object outside a black hole's event horizon will feel its gravitational effects since space will be warped by the black hole's presence, but it will still be able to escape. It won't definitely go into the black hole if it moves fast enough or accelerates swiftly enough in the right direction, but it may be able to escape the black hole's gravitational pull. However, once an object exceeds the event horizon, it is doomed to be swallowed up by the black hole's central singularity. Because the fabric of space-time inside a black hole is strongly curved, an infalling object will approach the singularity within seconds of crossing the event horizon, increasing the mass of the black hole. The black hole appears to originate, gathers mass, and grow over time from outside the event horizon. However, here is one thing to focus on. Three-dimensional black holes in our universe have two-dimensional event horizons. That means our universe has to emerge from a four-dimensional black hole in a four-dimensional universe to be an event horizon. The laws of physics inhibit us from knowing what happened in a black hole's singularity, but we can calculate what happens on the boundary of an event horizon. The event horizon encodes information as matter falls into the black hole. The black hole and the event horizon develop in sync until the surface area is exactly the proper size to hold all of the information for all of the matter that has ever entered the black hole since its birth. All of that data may be used to explain everything in our universe. This possibility was first proposed by researchers at the Perimeter Institute at the University of Waterloo in 2014. According to the researchers, there is one problem with the Big Bang. They say the problem is that the Big Bang hypothesis has our relatively comprehensible, uniform and predictable universe arising from the physics destroying insanity of a singularity. It seems unlikely. Now, if we live in a black hole, our universe must conform to the Schwarzschild equation. It is known that there are approximately 1011 galaxies in the universe, and there are about 1012 stars in each galaxy, and the stars are on average 21,030 kilograms. In star systems, most of the mass comes from the stars, as in the solar system. The mass of the universe is 21,053 kilograms, approximately. If we calculate the Schwarzschild radius by the mass of the universe, we can find out what the radius of a black hole in the universe should be. The true radius of the observable universe is 46.5 billion light years, whereas the result we found is 36 billion light years. Since we don't know what the other 95% of the universe is made up of, their names begin with dark, dark matter energy, black hole. We can presumably produce more accurate forecasts if we can just determine the unknown mass. The question is still there, are we really living inside a black hole? We can get to a possible answer through Hawking's radiation. According to Stephen Hawking, the line between a black hole and a white hole blurs if a black hole leaks mass by Hawking radiation in perfect equilibrium with the radiation it absorbs, for instance, from the cosmic microwave background. It's possible that they're the same thing. 
He said, if you lump all of this together, a very specific construction for white holes to make them look like our universe from within, and Hawking's argument that equates white holes with black holes, then there's a roundabout way to argue we might not be in a black hole. So we might not be in a black hole, but that is not an absolute answer. To prove it further, we really need some more research. Maybe we are living inside a chain of black holes, or maybe not. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comment section below. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more informative videos.